Hello everybody, this is Heike from Heike's DIY Shab and Chic. My 2020 resolution is to show my face. So this is a first for me. I um, don't like, you know, showing myself like this. I prefer you looking at my hands. But as I had people telling me that uh, they would like to see my face too, I said, okay, let's do that. And this is a video where you are going to be able to see me, my face, but of course, and specifically my hands when I'm going to work on a piece. I got this piece in a charity shop and um, what made me get it was the shape because it's like an amphora, amphora I think you say in English, and um, I want to transform it into an old world look. I have a lot, a lot of messages from people telling me, how do you do this and how do you do that? And um, for this small piece, I would like to show you one way of doing it. And please be aware that usually I don't really know what steps I'm going to do, what's going to be next. I just go ahead with it. I just uh, go gut wise and uh, I look at the piece and I say, no, that's not it. Or yes, that's it. Or I step back as well. The other thing is I don't do lives because um, that's the reason, in fact, because I never know where things go. And uh, this time it's going to be a video in several steps because at the moment I'm in Malta and um, it's January. And in January, it's very cold. The houses get very cold. We don't have electrical heating like I have back home in Switzerland. And uh, things take extremely long to dry. So I can't do a whole video on the steps that I'm, I'm showing you. And uh, I will have to come back every now and then and continue on the piece that I'm going to do. So for this piece, as I said, I'd like to get an old world finish. I love texture. I just can't do without texture. I'm not the person who does smooth finishes. I can't do smooth finishes. Whenever somebody asks me to do a smooth finish for a piece of furniture, I just can't do it. I just say, I'm very sorry, but um, that's not me. And I usually give the name of a colleague. So if you have seen my work, this is what I like to do, a lot of texture. And this is what we're going to do on this piece as well. And you can create texture with just paint with stippling on for example the paint this is already giving you some texture you can use additives to add to your paint and um, i have for example the salt wash here i had used it on another project i just can't remember which project it was and i had showed you that um, already used the salt wash there there are other additives I have another one which is the sea salt fizz from Autentico that I've just discovered and I started using and I like it very much. So I've got different techniques. I've got the sea salt from Dixibel as well, which is very good. So there are really a lot of mediums out there. So I might use that. I uh, got this relief paste from Cadence. I got that yesterday, just yesterday, and I said, oh, I might be able to use that on the piece. It's just a structure paste, and I would like to, you could use that with ray stenciling, for example, and I might use that on creating texture. And um, what else do I have? I've got the Easy Crackle here, which is um, a crackle medium. And there are also quite a few out there in terms of brands. This one is from Artisan Enhancements. I've rarely used it and it's been in my cupboard for so long. So I just hope that it still works if I use it. Usually I use the Easy Cracker from Fenchik, uh, which I really, really like and I'm very happy with it. Um, also from Crackle, uh, also from Artisan Enhancements is the Crackle Tex. Now I've used that in the last, um, in my last pieces and I'm, I, I like that a lot. Uh, you might ask yourself, why are they in glass jars? They do come in tins, uh, all these mediums or um, all these paints. But as I said, in Malta, it's humid, it, be it summer, be it winter. 
And the thing is that um, if I leave them in tins like that, like this, for example, and I don't use it very often, they get very rusty and get contaminated and um, everything goes bad. So what I do is I just put them in these glass jars. And for the moment, that's working for me. Another thing is this medium from Artisan Enhancements, which is fine stone. It's a medium which is like granulated that um, I might also use on the M4 on the vase that I have here. I have, I'm not really, I don't really know where I'm going yet. I'm just putting out all my products and then I see what I'm going to use. I'm just showing you which products are out there if you want to. The, you can also achieve texture without any of those products. As I said, you step on the paint, you wait till it dries, you step it back on, you step more, you step less. You can use that just the same. So I do that a lot on furniture, but here I really, really want a crusty and thick finish. So whatever there is on products, I'm going to use them. What else do I have? I have some paints here. So I have a leftover, which I had already mixed with salt wash for another pro uh, product. And um, I have to use it because um, uh, I hope it's not going to get bad. So you can see when you mix paint additive, it gets really thick and that helps you to create the texture and to create the layers because this is what it's going to be about. It's going to be about layers. I'm not just putting on one color or just one layer, but I'm going to use different layers. So I might do um, the first texture coat with this one with my leftover. I would like to either use the green, a light green that comes through with white. So this is the Weisold Sage from Frenchique. And uh, I also have the old white from Annie Sloan left. So I really have to use that up because it's getting very, very thick. I have to mix it up with some water because it's been in my cupboard for quite a while. But it's just perfect if you want to create texture. From Annie Sloan as well, I have the um, Duck Egg Blue, which I really like. I, I really, really like that colour. It gives like a Gustavian blue, like a Swedish blue, but mm, I don't know. And then, then with the waxes, it just gives so much depth. So most probably I'm going to use that um, in the layers as well. What else do I have? Um, I have some greys as well. So again, different brands. I've got Helen Tradition Paints here, which is um, a nice grey. I've got a light grey, the Wolf Whistle from Frenchique. This is Rainy Day from Helen Traditions Paint. And um, as you can see, I mean, I'm a hoarder. I'm a paint hoarder. Whenever there's a new product or there's something I like, whoop, I'm on the internet or I'm uh, trying to get hold of the things that um, I like. And um, I like having a choice. I don't like having just three pots of paints and uh, I go with that. No, I, I need a choice. I like to mix. I like to create layers. And the problem is that my cupboard is really full with a lot of things. And this is why I have to start using all these product paints that I have. I am not somebody who is just for one paint brand. I like using different brands because there are uh, different finishes which I prefer using one brand and another finish that I like using with um, another finish. And uh, so this is why I stock so many things because like Annie Sloan, for example, when you it, it can get quite thick. When you open it first, a new tin, it's beautiful. It's still thicker than others but then it thickens up and uh, it really does create just beautiful texture. Um, and it's not self-leveling, I think you say in English. So um, it's not like with other paints, you have to put much more on those who are self-leveling and um, you have to put, you have to step in much more, you have to do more techniques on it because the paint, which is really, really good, is self-leveling. So for the self-leveling ones, I do some blending, for example. And if I really want to have some texture, I use the Annie Sloan. 
But as I said, I think I'm going to uh, get started. It's um, still cold in here. I'm freezing a bit. I have to get start painting because paint here, it takes very, very long to dry. As I said, it's very humid and at the moment also very cold. And um, I need to use my heat gun to speed up the process. But there are products like um, the Crackle Text, for example, or the Easy Crackle, which is good at least for the for the finish I want to let it dry not use the heat gun you might use the the blow dryer the hair dryer but don't use the heat gun with this kind of product because um, it will not work or it will not work as good as uh, you might want to so I'm going to start putting on a base coat and I will be back step by step with showing you how this works I've done the first layer and now I'm doing the second layer and I just wanted to show you how you can already create texture on a piece that seems very flat. So it's stippling on. Let me see if I can get this right. Maybe with the light, can you see there is already some texture going on and the more texture you create, the more your waxes in the end or your glazes in the end will get into those it's not nooks and crannies it's they catch the, the the waxes and the glazes will catch much better in uh, in texture obviously and even if you just wanted to do this effect even in the stippled effect that you put all over you will have the same thing and you can put more or less you can put a heavy um heavy paint or you do a bit less in areas and you don't need all these fancy products that I showed you. It's a possibility to make it work like this as well. I will come back once this is dry and uh, we'll show you the next steps. So the first coat or the first two coats are dry and I'm uh, going to put on another coat and this time it's old white from Annie Sloan and um, I had to water it down a bit but I think it's still quite thick so I can uh, really work with that. So I'm going to go ahead and oops put it here and again I'm going to can you see oops, I'm going to slap it on to give it that texture that I want and I'm going to do that in crisscross nothing neat crisscross um, movement and uh, I'm going to do that and when I finish this and when this is dry, can you see I'm really, really slapping it on. I really want to create the texture. So when I finished, I'm going to start putting on the first layer of crackle. And see how this comes. There's no need to put the paint everywhere, let the color which is underneath shine through a little bit. There you go. And I'm going to do that. Finish this. And have already, if you can see, already, is the light good? Already quite a bit of texture going on. And we're going to continue layering that. I'll be back once this is dry. Thank you. So my first layer is hmm, nearly dry. 
you can see the different textures already coming up just with the paint and um, if you like that you could leave it as is and then go and wax or dry brush over it i really like the texture here and um, in fact i was going to put the crackle on and the crackle text and the easy crackle and um, i decided that i want a bit more crusty texture and i'm just going to apply this liberally wherever i think it's suitable and i'm going to put this on the various in different areas this is the um the relief paste of cadence and uh, you can use joint compound you could use any structure paste that you have on hand i just bought this yesterday and um, want to try it out so i'm going to put this on and then it needs more time to dry and i will afterwards go ahead and put the crackle on and come back when the crackle is dry because I don't think it's interesting for you to see how I apply the medium. So this is it for the moment and I'm going to continue on the piece and try to make it even and thicker in some places, thinner in others and uh, we are going to see each other once all this is dry and i'm sorry i'm trying to show you what this looks like and uh, once this is dry i'll be back and we continue with the steps i did the base then I started putting on my structure medium. I have to put it this way, otherwise you don't see anything, right? And look, it's coming slowly but surely together. I decided to also add the fine stone, Oops. the fine stone medium that I talked about in the very beginning. So I added it and I mixed it and I dabbed it and um, I went on to it. You don't have to use the fine stone. I also had pieces where I used sand from the garden. <laughs> yes, I did. Or um, I use um, sawdust as well. Sawdust is also great to give texture. And um, as I had this on hand and I told you that I need to use my products otherwise they will go bad i uh, said I'll, I'll use this one so you just apply apply it any way you want and um, i instead of doing the sanding afterwards to sand off the peaks i just do it whilst i'm putting on the texture so once it's on i just go very slightly over the 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 texture over the medium and i just smooth it down a little bit not too much just very very lightly go down on them and uh, dab where you want more or take off and this is what it looks like at the moment i will speed the drying time up with my heat gun and then i will put the crackle text and the easy crackle and that i need to let it be and not use my heat gun or my uh, blow dryer because otherwise it might not work but look at this texture this is exactly what i'm going for and what i'm looking for the next step as i said will be the crackle and then another layer of color but i'll be back for that and we'll show you how Just coming on to show you what it looks like, the texture that I've done up to now. It's not completely dry yet, but I really wanted to show you what it looks like with uh, the structure medium, or as I said, you could use the joint compound. Just make sure that you have a base coat before. 
and uh, here I use the structure medium with fine stone. Here is fine stone on its own. Here is a mixture of fine stone and the structure paste. And uh, if I go around, you can see what it looks like. You can see here, I didn't put anything here, like here or just here in between. Here I put hardly anything, so we still have the base coat shining through. And in other places, I put a lot, a lot of um, medium and um, structure medium as well as the fine stone to have that look that I'm going for. I came across a leftover of color wash that I had done a while back and uh, instead of throwing it away I said let me do a glaze or a color wash. We can use both names, glaze is a little bit different but uh, color wash is usually a 50 water and 50 paint mix and uh, very easy to apply. So here it is something that I want to get into the texture. If you don't want it that much, I'd suggest you do a top coat first. But for this purpose and for this piece, this is not what I'm looking for. So I'm just putting it on in several areas and I'm going to take it or dab it off again. So the white is still showing through because I still want to the crack latex and I want the white to have a say in the layers and not just cover up everything. But as you can see, this uh, color wash sets into the texture and this is what gives it quite a bit of depth. So I'm going to do this and um, then I'm going to put the crackle on. The crackle text has totally dried now, so I'm going to apply the next layer of paint. I poured, oopala, I poured some uh, duckic blue out and uh, what is important, what you have to do is you put enough paint on your piece and you layer it on and do not over work it you could apply it with a sponge as well i like applying it with my brush and i might not even apply everywhere apply it quite thick so the crackle really can take place. As I said, this is one layer. And uh, if you work with crackle, you should work in sections. Don't make too big of pieces because for this technique, as it is drying, not completely dry yet, but drying, I, I am going to take off some of the layers that we had or that I had put on beforehand. Just checking. So as you can see here, if I overwork it, in fact, I'm going to take off the paint again. And you could do that if you want to create even more texture, but normally you should not overwork your crackle. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of kitchen towel and uh, going to see if the crackle is happening or not. Yes, you can see that there is some crackle coming along and I also have the sea sponge and with the sea sponge you can dab it away you can do this see let's see if I can show you this here it's here if I go like this I'm taking off I'm taking off the um the paint again and see if I if it's if I if I dab with my kitchen towel I have to do it this way and I show you once I'm finished so I'm doing this in you see it's kind of taking off the paint again to relieve the underlying colors and you can do that whilst the paint is still slightly humid and just take it off and whilst you're taking it off you're also creating some texture because the paint is lifting and uh, you have to keep on going until you're happy and this is why it's so important to work in sections because as soon as the paint is dry this won't work anymore so this works for me I'm lifting the color, not the color, but the paint. And I'm continuing doing this again. Can you see it's lifting it off? And this is what the the crackle text helps with. It really is I'm just lifting off the paint again you could do that most probably with a kitchen towel i'm trying to dab it off i'm trying to twist it and dab around it's not looking too bad and again maybe you can see how this starts to look and I'm going to go around the piece and then create the next layer. So it's dried. I just hit it with my heat gun to dry the paint quicker and uh, I just wanted to show you the result of putting on the crackle text then putting on the paint and uh, taking off the paint again and see all the texture that's coming up and coming through. It looks very rustic. This is what I like and what I'm looking for. Look at this. And I will continue doing the same thing with another color. I will put on the crackle text now, let it dry again and put another layer of uh, paint and uh, take it off again. Most probably I will be going for a green this time. I haven't decided just yet, but um, for me this is not just enough. I really do want to have uh, a bit more colours in there 
and layer them. You can also see where I didn't take off the paint. You can see crackle forming, which is also very nice because waxes, they settle into those crevices that you might see. And um, this is what I like uh, creating. So next step coming up soon. So I've applied some green color now and uh, did the same as before. So I had put the crackle text, then I put the paint and then I took it off again with uh, either the sponge or a kitchen towel. And uh, this is what it looks like at the moment with those two colors. I'm not really happy yet, so um, I will continue layering. I might do a wash now, maybe a whitewash, because in fact, I like, I like how it comes through. So um, I'm going to continue and uh, do either another layer the same way as before and take off again or I will just do a color wash and the color wash you have seen how this works so I don't need to show you that again. Popping on again with my color wash so I decided to do uh, this color wash with old white and um, I just did this and I like how it's coming out. I like the drips going down as well. So I said, let me just show you how I do that. Very, very easy. What you need is a sprayer. So put your color wash on and then just go ahead and and dab and dab off what you want to be off you don't need to leave the drips i like them and um, you really can play with colors like this you can layer them you can use other colors on top of it but i start liking my uh, vase and um, for sure afterwards with the uh, with the waxes and uh, yes with the waxes it will come out even more and give even more dimension and the white will not be as white as is it it is here at the moment because uh, i'm going to put some browning wax on so for the moment this is it i need to let it dry and uh, see if I am happy with it or if I use another color, which wouldn't surprise me because um, I always have to step back. And then when I see the thing, I think mm, might put something else on. So this is what it looks like at the moment without waxes, without anything. We've got quite a few layers for the moment. So uh, see you in the next step. I thought there was something missing and I went into my stash and I found some leftovers of transfers like this that I cut out for other things and didn't use and um, I started to put on one. It's not the easiest thing because it's a rough surface but I think it looks quite okay. It should look old. I will distress it afterwards. I will put on some more. Um, I guess I'm going to put on this one here and uh, and then I will distress it with a very fine sandpaper and uh, then the waxing can start.
I'm ready for waxing and here is my clear wax and this is my brown wax or dark wax. I love working with the French chic waxes. They go on really, really well. I've got different brushes usually. I've got the big one to go over bigger pieces. I've got this round brush, very cheap one for the dark wax and I usually also have you know some smaller brushes depending on where I want to go. So I'm going to start with the browning wax and I'm going to put it up here in in this part because I want this to look very very old and I'm going to go down in circular motions and generally you would start with clear wax and then put the browning wax because it's easier to take it off again the browning wax if you've got too much but for me here this is just fine i just put the browning wax for the moment and i'm going to clear it off and see how i like it and you might see how it goes in those nooks in those crevices that we created and this is what it's going to be like for the whole piece we created those different layers and uh, the wax is going to sit in them so i'm going to clear wax anyway first here for the rest of the piece and um and then i'm going to go in with the browning wax there's no need to put a lot there's very little this goes a long way just put it everywhere you can let it sit a while i'm for this purpose i'm just putting it on and then wiping it off very lightly and now i'm going to go in with my browning wax and i'm going to put the browning wax on my piece and the browning wax will alter your color for sure so if you do something like that you have to think before if you have a white and you put browning wax like this it's going to look very very old and it's not going to stay white and even my duck egg blue is not going to stay a duck egg blue, but it's going to be deeper. But this is what I like. And this is how I like my things to be. So as you can see, there is the browning wax everywhere. And uh, I am also going to do this on the little lid, which goes up here. I did exactly the same procedure as before and here i'm really just putting on the browning wax first without the clear wax because you would put the brown wax there where people touch it a lot so it should look used and maybe you can see how this comes out i think you've seen quite a bit of me waxing my things and um Using those waxes is for me something to age. Let me just turn, just turn this to age. So you can rub it off or you can just dab the browning wax around very lightly so you let it settle. I might let, I might put another layer of browning wax and let it sit longer so it can not dry but start of kind of sitting in 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 the in the texture like for example here where i put the writing on i might go over that again with to distress even more So this is what I'm doing here. I'm going 
to put more browning wax. I think it would have been better if I had put browning wax only and not clear wax and just clear wax afterwards if needed. So I'm going to let this sit a little bit and then dab it off again. And uh, I'll be back and show you the results. Here is the finished piece. We finished it last night. The last step was the waxing. My resolution 2020 was to do a tutorial step by step and showing myself and talk to you. Sometimes I might talk too much. I don't know. You can give me feedback on that. But I enjoyed creating this with you and taking you on the journey of how I create texture. At least on this piece, there are different techniques of creating texture. I use other techniques as well. But for this, as I wanted it to look rustic, grungy, Frenchy, old world uh, look, this is my creation or this is the way I see things. We did a lot of crustiness. We did color washes, we used structure mediums, we used crackle, and we even put a bit of a transfer here and here as well. And in the end, the waxing gave the protective finish, but, and specifically, gives it the dimension of the different layers. Wax, when you clear wax it, it's a protective finish. But when you also use other waxes, it, first of all, even the clear wax, it deepens the colors. And uh, if you use browning wax or defining wax, gray wax, white wax, depending on the finish that you have and the colors that you chose to do this, the finish will be slightly different. The color might be even deeper and uh, you have to be aware of that. Curing time of wax or this now has to dry, for example and uh, curing time is very 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 important and uh, it takes about three to three weeks to a month to really uh, dry up it all depends on the the temperature that you have in your environment where you live if it's humid if it's cold if it's hot um, the times might vary slightly but you do have to let it harden and dry up so the finish is um, is a tough one and that's specifically important when you do furniture if you don't wait uh, and uh, you hit the piece it scratches very very easily so be aware of that um, I am going to stage this piece now I'm going to put it I don't know yet exactly I'm going to put it on a chest of drawers or on the windowsill um, I might use it as a vase or I might use some dried flowers in there or I will just leave it as is because I've got this cute little lid that goes with it and I just put it somewhere in my decoration. That's it for this tutorial. I um, wanted to give you a few tips and tricks on the way. You realize that um, sometimes I change my mind and I didn't do what I said in the beginning because um, as I said in the very, very beginning, it's I go with my gut. And if I look at it and I don't like it, or I say, no, that's not what the piece needs now. And sometimes pieces talk to you, just so you know. Um, well, then you do something different. And this is also why, and I said that in the beginning as well, I don't, I can't do lives for the moment. I'm just, um, I just like using so many things and um, I never know in advance how this is going to be but anyway so you were able to to join me on this um in this process and see how i function and how i create the texture if you have any questions please don't hesitate to get in touch i always try to answer as soon as possible as this is not my business i also work it might take a few hours sometimes that um, i answer and um, I would appreciate if you just tell me how you like the video. And in the meantime, take care. And thank you very much for following me, for sharing and for liking my page and my work. Thank you.